How are you doing? I'm Martin from Gardens for Life in Berlin Homestead. In this quick video, I'm going to talk to you about long-term storable foods that you can grow yourself at home in your garden. Especially if you have a no-dig garden, these will be very low maintenance and they are very easy to store. Some of them actually need to be picked up out of the garden, like pumpkins, for example. Those would be good to start now and um, you still have plenty of time to do so, but just make sure you keep them frost free before you plant them out. So we like to grow them on in a little uh, half liter pot first in the greenhouse. A lot of the pumpkins that we grow, for example, are Hoshiki Kuri and they store really well, especially um, at the end of the season, you gotta pick those up before the first frost comes uh, because the frost can damage them. So you wanna make sure you store those in a frost free place. Probably October is the best time to pick those up and uh, store them and they store for about three months. So you can have pumpkin soup and pumpkin pies and uh, roast pumpkin until uh, well after Christmas. So the second crop I'd like to recommend is actually kale. We grow a lot of perennial kales, so you don't ever have to actually start those from seed. Uh, some of them can be grown just from cuttings and we do like other ones too though, such as the um, uh, Portuguese kale, red Russian kale, and the uh, Dobbinton and the uh, Taunton Dean is our favorite now, but that one is best grown from cuttings. You can grow kale in your garden and actually just leave it there until you're going to eat it. You can simply leave it out in the garden and use it fresh. So you don't actually have to preserve it and to store it. Uh, the leaves are quite good quality, even deep into the winter. That's the Dobbinton kale now. It, it just grows year after year, even in this garden here. We haven't done any planting at all yet this year. It's already starting to grow. Rhubarb is definitely one I would recommend to grow too because it's basically zero maintenance. It takes up a little bit of space in the garden, but we even let it go to flower to attract beneficial insects so we don't ever have to spray anything in our gardens. Not even the type of stuff that organic growers are allowed to use. We don't ever spray anything at all in our gardens and our plants are fairly healthy. This is another variety. It's Victoria and we have Glaskins Perpetual. Rhubarb is great because you can keep it here until the end of October. Glaskins Perpetual can be harvested until the very end of October. It's the only variety that you can do that with. So again, rhubarb is another one of those crops that you can just harvest whenever you're ready. As long as it's the right variety, make sure you don't harvest other varieties of rhubarb after midsummer. Well, the other long-term storable food that you don't have to preserve or even take up in the garden until you need it is Jerusalem artichokes. Those are one of our favorites. You can just leave those in the garden and harvest them whenever you're ready. They'll be fine. There is no pests going after them and the frost doesn't damage them at all. And they grow almost without any maintenance except for the stalks in the winter time. And this is, the, this is them here. These are just a tuberous sunflower. That's all they are, and they grow really, really tall. They grow right up to about 10 feet tall, or three meters. I would cure them first before you eat them. Otherwise, you'll find out why they're known as fartichoke as well. Another one of those crops is actually the elephant garlic, and you can see it here. It's in the leek family. It kind of looks like leek, and um, it is usually planted and harvested for the bulb in the very, in the very bottom, at, in the ground. Um, around July and that's when it becomes available on our website as well. So if you'd like to grow elephant garlic you can avail of it then. But all of the garlic varieties are uh, perennial so you could plant those and just leave them there until you're going to need them. You can use the greens too any time of year you can really harvest those and you don't have to worry about storing the bulbs in a, a dry place or a frost free place. They actually do fine out there. You might say, why bother growing all this food that's long-term storable when you can eat things from the garden that are just fresh? Because we want to actually use half of our space in the gardens to grow vegetables for the next off-season, that means for the next winter, and even for the all the way up to the hungry gap. We never really had a hungry gap here, to be honest with you, because we grow a lot of perennial vegetables, and those are actually using uh, last year's root system to grow very big, even way before the spring uh, brings you the hungry gap. Some vegetables are best harvested in the summer, like uh, beans and uh, tomatoes and peppers and that kind of thing. You probably need to preserve those because you can't really store those for very long. So uh, other vegetables though, uh, long-term storable vegetables are handy 
because you can either, like pumpkins for example, you can store them for three to six months at a time, or you can um, harvest your hardier vegetables any time during the winter as well as the growing season. So I would highly recommend growing some of those because they're low maintenance and you know for those of you who don't have much time to worry about the garden that's perfect because you can harvest them whenever you're ready. You don't necessarily have to harvest them like broccoli for example that's kind of a perishable good and it needs to be harvested just about at the right time otherwise it kind of goes off by basically going to flower. And the other thing is if you're growing lots of winter vegetables you can even feed those to your livestock. Chickens absolutely love to get some greens especially in the winter time when there isn't any around and uh, we do like to grow a lot of kale especially for the chickens. That keeps them healthy they also love eating it so we like to give them as good a life as we can and a species appropriate diet or at least as close to it as to where they're from in China from thousands of years ago when they were domesticated. Plus we get a byproduct, eggs. Subsidizing some of that feed with uh, fresh kale that you can grow on your property definitely helps to save money but also it keeps your birds healthier and happier as well. And your eggs will taste way better and will be more nutritious. And if you'd like to support us you can get something on our online shop. We have uh, plants and tubers and cuttings available there. We still have a few willows left as well if you're interested. And we also, for those of you not in Ireland or in Europe, you can also support us by joining our Patreon page or our membership page as well. We highly appreciate your support. Thanks. All right. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I would highly appreciate your feedback. And if any of you are from the Midlands of Ireland, we're always hosting workshops here all about uh, both chicken keeping, homesteading, growing your own food, preserving, canning and all the rest. So we hope to see some of you at our workshops and we're going to be hosting a Homesteaders of Ireland a swap meet shortly as well. So take a look at our website and we'll see you later. Bye bye.